Welcome to the first video of the series. In this video, we're going to be talking about the concept related to spatial analysis. So let's begin. First, like, let's look at what are spatial data or geospatial data. So spatial data or geospatial data refers to any kind of data with a geographic component on it, meaning it will have a latitude and longitude value. So let's go to the next slide. And here you'll see that uh, wait a minute. There you go. Now here you'll see that I have pinned a place on the Google Earth Pro map here. So this place has a certain location, right? How can I find this place? To find this place, we use the coordinate systems, the geographic coordinate system. So here we have the latitude value of 60 degrees and the longitude value of 89 degrees. And there are also minutes and seconds. So if we uh, if we match up the latitude value and the longitude value, so here it's a latitude line and here we have a longitude line. Suppose, let me take a pen. There you go. Suppose there is a latitude line. There you go and a longitude line. There are a lot of latitude lines and longitude lines there. So suppose the value of the latitude line at this point is 60 degrees and the longitude value is 89 degrees and then there are also minutes and seconds involved. So that is how we can find a location using the geographic coordinate system. Now let's talk about this geographic coordinate system. So there are coordinate systems to specify a certain location on maps and the coordinate system we just talked about is the geographic coordinate system and if you don't know what latitude and longitudes are and want to know a bit more about them i have added uh, two videos here the links to two videos that you can see to watch them a bit better and this entire presentation will be provided to you as a pdf okay now Let's move on. We have already seen this. Now we have another coordinate system that is called the projected coordinate systems. Uh, actually, there are more coordinate systems than these two, but in, in this series, we're just going to be using these two coordinate systems. So I'm just talking about these two coordinate systems. So the projected coordinate system is actually the projection of the 3D surface to a 2D surface for measuring linear distances. Uh, more suitable definition is given here. If you want to read it, you can read it out. So a uh, famous projected coordinate system is the UTM system and it is very widely used and in ATU, UTM systems there are north things, east things and there are also zone definitions. So let's take a uh, look at a picture. Now here was our previous picture where we had located this certain point with the help of the coordinate system here we had lot latitude and longitude of this certain point to identify this certain point now when we use the utm system we are uh, we have the easting and the northing and then we have the zone selection here for the same specified point now why do we need the utm system when we have our uh, geographical coordinate system right so for example say that uh, let me erase those uh, quickly there you go now let's just say that suppose you live here this is your home somewhere around here uh, okay and here is a park all right so your friend uh, has come to your city and he does not he wants to go to a park and he doesn't know the location of the park so you're not going to tell him to go to 60 degrees, uh, 6 degrees north latitude and 89 degrees east in longitude direction, right? That wouldn't make sense. You will tell him to go straight for, so I suppose, uh, 1000 meters and uh, and then you're going to tell him to, from there you go to left, left for another 2000 meters or 200 meters and you'll get to the park, right? So for those kind of reasons we have different kinds of coordinate systems and if you want to know more about the utm system how it works how you can calculate it i have also provided uh, three video links 
for you to understand the system better now if i had made some explanation videos about the systems myself i wouldn't have made it much better than uh, these existing videos these videos are really good and I, those videos help me to understand the systems as well so i highly recommend those videos if you want to know more about them all right now moving on we're going to be talking about gis data types so the two types of data we're going to be using are the raster data type and the vector data type so first let's talk about the raster data type now raster data type as you can understand that these are image type data so let's just read it out raster data types are used to represent continuous data values such as elevation heel shade temperature and etc in the next page i have a picture of hill shade of Narangonj here so uh, the hill shade uh, helps me to under helps us to understand the elevation and the shade of the hill so it helps us understand the hill shade not the elevation sorry about that it helps us to understand the hill shades and the shadings and then you can also do elevations and temperature etc we'll, we'll take a look at those when we apply we go to our software we'll understand better all right then we uh, we know that uh, we know the raster data comprises of cells in a grid mystery matrix and each cell represents an area on the earth's surface and each uh, of that place has a certain location according to the coordinate systems okay so let's move on to the vector data so vector data are used to represent discrete features such as using polygons points and lines to represent boundaries then roads and then uh, locations of hospitals schools colleges universities etc and then the file type is dot shp which is a shape file and the vector data files are usually shape files all right now let's move on now we have polygon shape files for representing our administrative areas or boundaries of regions uh, and countries so here i have a map of shonargao so uh, this is a map i made this map is made by me using arcgis now as you can see that the polygons i use the polygon to draw the boundary of the area of the administrative area so polygons are used for that and then we have polylines polylines to represent roads and rivers so you can see polylines here there are red lines blue lines and there you can see black lines here also so these lines are to represent the roads and then we have point shape files to represent point features like schools and hospitals etc uh, let me see if i can show you a bigger picture okay there we go now as you can see the p points are representing primary school the h points are representing high school and the plus points are representing the community clinics in this map so that is what these are used for so that was it for this video i hope you found this video to be informative and I look forward to seeing you to the next videos and you'll find the link to this presentation in the description. So thank you very much for watching. If you have found the video to be useful, please like and consider subscribing to the channel as it will enable me to make more videos like this one. Thank you.